Hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture. So this is where we had left off in the previous lecture where we had compiled the two projects and we had fixed a few errors especially with respect to the Bitfield project. And as I said this is something that you unfortunately will face with Bitfield that is you have to know which source files to add and every now and then you will miss a source file and the only way to figure that out is to find out the error and look for the error in the actual project related in Visual Studio Code. Because somewhere or the other that particular symbol which is missing will be defined in one of the source files and then you will know which source file to add. So in this lecture we are going to now execute the project. Now in the previous section we had executed the example project but in that case we had a single CPU project. In this case we have a dual CPU project and there is a specific sequence to how you have to execute it's dual CPU project and that's what I'm going to show you in this particular lecture. So with this I'm going to first bring in the microcontroller into the video because the microcontroller also has certain connections and this way you can verify your connections as well. So with this you will now see the microcontroller in the video. The microcontroller is connected to the host computer using the USB cable as usual. However in this particular case we are not using the LEDs on board the microcontroller but rather we are going to connect LEDs externally through the pins of the microcontroller kit. And that is what I have shown here. So for example, I hope you have also done the same. And in case you are wondering about these pins, the best way to find out this is go over to the kit overview document which contains the pin layout. And this pin layout will show you which of the pins are there. And this is something I have actually described in the previous lecture where we were selecting the GPIO pins. So in this case, the most important connection you must not forget this is there has to be a ground connection because all the connections have to be made with respect to ground. And this ground pin is here. Of course there are other ground pins which you can also select. And the three pins are here. So this is pin number 22. This is pin number 97 and this is pin number 52. And I have connected these pins to series resistors which are then connected to three LEDs. So I have used a red LED, a blue LED and a white LED. Of course, feel free to use any you want. Only thing you must remember is when you're connecting LEDs, there is a polarity. So make sure that you have the correct polarity and the negative polarity is connected to the ground. So in this case, with these kind of LEDs, which are through hole LEDs, the cathode or the negative polarity has a slightly larger terminal. And you can make that out when you hold it up to the light. When you hold it up to the light, you will see that the anode and the cathode have two different sizes and the cathode is usually larger and that is how you identify the cathode which is a negative term. So this is now our microcontroller. I can just zoom in a little because now all we need to do is see the solderless breadboard and we are now ready to execute our code. So to execute the code again as I said there is a very specific sequence when you are executing dual CPU projects. Now CPU 1 is the main processor. So the first thing we must download the code onto CPU 1. We must execute this code onto CPU 1 and only then are we ready to download and execute the code onto CPU 2. So let's get started first. I'll just right click on this and go into debug. And as usual I will always select CPU 1 because this is the CPU 1 code. There's no point in trying to download this onto CPU 2 anyway. And you will see this particular state. Now this is a little misleading and the reason for that is because I've actually zoomed in. So let me just go and shrink some of these. We don't need all these. And here you'll see a list of all the CPUs. So for example, you'll see that there are four cores with this particular microcontroller. CPU 1, CLA 1, CPU 2, CLA 2, CLA. And this is, this is CPU 2 CLA 1. Sorry, I mean there are actually two CLAs, one associated with CPU 1 and the other associated with CPU2. Now, we have downloaded the code onto CPU1. So CPU1 code is now present on the microcontroller. It is in halted state, right? The code is not running yet. It is in halted state and you can make out that all the LEDs are not glowing, right? So the first thing we must do, we must execute this code because remember only upon executing this code are we transferring control of certain GPIO pins to CPU2. And that has to happen in CPU1 code. So let me go over and run this code. 
and you will see now that the red and the blue LEDs are glowing because we are controlling pin number 22 and pin number 97 from CPU 1. But the white LED is not growing because that is connected to pin number 52 which is connected to CPU 2. So now we have to now load the code onto CPU 2 and execute it. Now the way to do that is this. The first thing if you notice you will see that only CPU 1 is running. All the other cores are disconnected. So the first thing we must do, we must select our CPU 2 core and we must connect it. So now you see CPU 2 is connected but it is in the halted state, right? Which means it is in kind of standby. But the problem is we still have not downloaded code onto the CPU 2. And for that, there is a separate process. For that, you must, there is no right click option, unfortunately. The only way to do that is keep it selected, go to run, Go to load and load program. Now here I would ask you to remember that when we compiled the CPU2 project, in that case the end result was the dot out file. This is the executable file which we have to now download onto CPU2. This was done automatically for CPU1 when we entered debug mode. But we have to do it manually for CPU2. So for that we just have to browse and go to GPIO example, go to CPU2 and it is in the RAM folder because this is where the compiled outputs are and you will see here this is our dot out file, right? So make sure that this is the final dot out file. It has the same name as our main dot file, main fi main dot C file and in this case it simply has a dot out. So I am going to select it and click on open, click on OK and now you see something else happens. Now the code has been downloaded onto the microcontroller. That is the code has been downloaded onto CPU 2 of the microcontroller. And you will see that the status has changed. It is in halted state but there is a red dot which means there is now program on the microcontroller. So again to run this we just select it and we click on this continue button. And now you will see the white LED is also glowing. All three LEDs are glowing. So we are now running code independently on CPU 1 and CPU 2 while CPU 1 is the main processor and it has started the entire process. It has transferred control of GPIO 52 to CPU 2 and with code running on CPU 2 we are now able to control the state of GPIO 52. So with this we are now done with the GPIO section. So I am going to end the microcontroller video and I will also end this particular program execution. So I hope you got exactly the same results. As I said there is a very specific sequence to how you execute a dual CPU project, right? Remember you must start with CPU 1. The first thing you must go into debug mode with CPU 1. You must select CPU 1 to be the target CPU for that particular execution. And once you run the code you can now have to connect CPU 2 you have to load the executable and you have to execute that. You have to run that. You have to run CPU. This is the sequence. So again, if necessary, watch this video twice or at least that part where I'm actually executing the entire, pro the entire project because this is something that can be a little tricky in the beginning. Once you get used to it, it comes automatically. So if any of this did not work or you faced any other issues or any other errors, Please post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to help you. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture where I will conclude on this section. Thank you so much for listening and see you soon. Goodbye for now.